Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's event. And right at the beginning, I'd like to apologize for the internet issues, which has led to a delay in starting today's program. Usually, we are dot at two o'clock. So, welcome to today's event. I'm Dr. Pratik Tambe, chairperson for the Amogs Endocrinology Committee. Today's theme is anemia, which is a silent killer and a major issue as far as obstetrics and but as usual, before we start with the scientific proceedings, I'd like to express my gratitude to the EMOX office bearers, our president, Dr. Ajendra Singh Pardeshi. Next slide, please. Thank you, sir, for your blessings and your guidance and for all your support for our academic endeavors. Thanks also to our secretary of EMOX, Dr. Sujata Darvi. She is an office bearer of the Mumbai Society, joint associate editor of Jogi, and of course, the secretary of EMOX. Next slide, please. I'd also like to express my gratitude to Dr. Lakshmi Shrikhande, Chairperson of ICOG, and Dr. Ashok Kumar. Next slide, please. Secretary of ICOG. Thank you for the ICOG credit points, not only for this event, but also for all the events which we've done in the past. We have two eminent chairpersons today, Dr. Sudesh Doshi, who is the Zonal Coordinator of AMOX. Next slide, please. And sir is somebody who we look up to. He is somebody who has done a lot of pioneering work in his part of Maharashtra. And thank you, sir, for joining us today. I'd also like to welcome Dr. Sarita Bhalera, who is a governing council member of ICOG, immediate past president of the Mumbai Society, Chair West Zone EICC RCOG, and she's contesting for the post of secretary of ICOG very soon. Wish you all the very best in your endeavors and hope that you will get elected unopposed. We have two fantastic speakers today, Dr. Rekha Rajesh. Next slide, please. She is the president of the Hosuru Beauty and Society. I visited that little society. A long time ago, it seems long time because we've lost about two or three years because of the pandemic and it seems like a very long time ago, but I'm pretty sure it was in the recent past. He's going to be speaking to us about Anima Mukta Bharat and Oral Iron. And next slide, please. I'd also like to welcome Dr. Basav Mukherjee, sir, is the immediate past vice president of Foxy, very much at the helm of affairs during EICOG 2023 in Kolkata. We saw what a fantastic show the entire Bengal society put in. And the silent worker of the society, of course, as is well known, is Sir Dr. Vasak Mukherjee. I'd like to take this, I'd like to welcome on this occasion the chief guest for today, Dr. Mandakini Meg. Ganesh, can we have the appropriate slide displayed, please, for Dr. Mandakini Meg's introduction? Madam is the chair, is the past chairperson of ICOG. She is the longest serving member of the Mumbai OBGYN Society, is somebody who's made ICOG, a name to reckon with in academic circles. During her tenure, she has promoted and encouraged so many grassroots workers. She's somebody who's worked with the government, not only of Maharashtra, but also of India. She was Deputy Director of Health Services of Ga Government of Maharashtra, in charge of Family Welfare, PCP, NDT, MTP. And in that capacity, she has helped to save so many doctors who were unfortunately victimized because of the PCP NDT law in the past. Welcome, Mandakini Meg, Madam. And I will hand over the stage to Madam to give us a few words of blessings. So, good afternoon, everyone. Very nice to see everyone here. And it's a great, great pleasure, uh, Pratik, for your CMEs and, you know, the very apt subject which you keep. And you can see the chairperson, everybody in the you know, present here that it shows itself shows the seriousness and a commitment of their time for this very important cause. Also, the wonderful speaker you have already introduced. So, uh, today's topic is anemia mukt bharat that we know, and our uh, beloved president of Foxy is having the mission of you know we have done so many CMEs and anemia mukt bharat all over India, and I think this is a favorite. For the topic of the policy makers of the health, because in spite of so many efforts, continuous efforts, I was a part of the RCH part one when we made the uh, this PIP. PIP is a project implementation plan where we, you know, keep some kind of budget and policies for the, you know, uh, prevention of anemia, you know, and the, so many other things are there, which I don't want to mention here family welfare, contraception, postpartum, I used everything. But anemia was the main component of the policy making. And also all of you know that government of India distributes the RCH packages right from the rural to the municipal corporation, even to Mumbai, those packages are there, which contain 100 tablets of the ferrous uh, sulfate and also the deworming. It's a regular program of government of India deworming. And I think they have succeeded a lot. And in that 
uh, you know, order where the we have to prevent the anemia in order to bring down the maternal mortality. And I think we are in the state, we, we are very proud of uh, Maharashtra and other parts of India, where we have brought the maternal mortality due to anemia, PPH, to 33 per 1 lakh. And I think 2030 target is already achieved. The STG target is already achieved because of the awareness and keen interest of all the practitioners and the professional bodies like POXI, MOX, AMWI, everyone there. I think your dedicated and sincere efforts uh, to help the government in bringing down the maternal mortality is commendable. And I think we appreciate, I was yesterday talking to some bureaucrat there. They say, not only government, every time if the government fails or they don't have facility there, everything falls on the shoulder of private practice. And we are always there to shoulder the responsibility, whether it's a cytology camp, whether it's a you know hemoglobin camps and all over we, we can see. So I think uh, the, with this uh, words, I really wish uh, Pratik uh, very best to this um, webinar. And thank you for making me the part of this because I keep on telling Pratik that whenever you have a very important subject of policy, please invite me and I'm always there. And Sarita and myself, we MWA people, we uh, duty and devotion is our motto. And with this motto, I think in Basa, wonderful ASUG, once again, I must thank you on this platform. And all of you, we being together is a great pleasure and also a great like a fellowship for all of us to take our health of the women forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mandakini. Make Madam for gracing the occasion. To her long list of credentials, I must also add that she is my zonal coordinator of AMOX. For all my academic programs with the AMOX Endocrinology Committee, her blessings are always there with me. Thank you, ma'am, for being here. And thank you for speaking on this occasion. And also, Without further ado, I would request the first chair. I mention about my other part also, which you mentioned for Sarita. Can I request Dr. Sarita Valera, ma'am, to please introduce our first speaker, Dr. Rekha Rajesh. Ganesh, can we have the CV slide displayed, please? Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank Dr. Pratik Tambe for inviting me to participate in this wonderful program. And I think that you have really taken a very, very important topic, which is, uh, I'm sure, of great interest to all our viewers. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Rekha Rajesh. Dr. Rekha Rajesh is currently the president of the Obstetric and Gynecological Societies of Krishnagiri. And she is the clinical director of the Vijay Shrishti Fertility Center at Osur. She has a uh, uh, keen academic interest. She's done her diploma in reproductive medicine from Germany. She's also done a diploma uh, from London. She practices fertility as well as high-risk pregnancy. And she's trained in uh, UK and as well as Germany. She's also the Joint Secretary of the IMA of Hosur and she is a life member of many prestigious organizations like ISAR, ASRM, IMS, PCOS India and the IAGE. Over to Dr. Rekha Rajesh. Thank you, Madam. <clears throat> thank you, Pratik, sir, for giving me this opportunity and uh, Thank you, Basab sir and Mandakini madam for joining me here in this webinar. <clears throat> I'll just share my screen. Yeah. <clears throat> just like Mandakini madam has introduced anemia as a topic, Anemia is a condition which all of us do confront in our daily practice and it's rampant across all ages and it's a medical condition in which hemoglobin levels below a certain number and RBC count below the normal range. It is There is a lack of healthy RBCs to carry adequate oxygen to the body tissues. To, so to tell you the normal levels for women are between 12 to 16 and for men is between 13 13.5 to 17.5 13 gram per deciliter. Mild anemia is defined as 10 to 12 in women and 10 to 13.5 in men and moderate is between 8 to 10 and severe anemia is below 8.
generally we classify anemia maybe on the basis of the cause or on the morphology on the cause when it is acute blood loss there is inadequate production uh, production or excessive destruction on the basis of morphology if it is normocytic microcytic or macrocytic based on this normocytic microcytic or macrocytic it is based on the mean corpuscular volume which is less than 80 fl and in normocytic is it between 80 to 100 and macrocytic mcv is between is more than 100 iron deficiency anemia is divided based on the lab tests when the serum iron is low and ferritin is low and tibc is elevated when we have to diagnose thalassemia if the serum iron is normal or elevated the serum ferritin may be normal or elevated tibc is usually normal and hemoglobin electrophoresis is normal in the alpha thalassemia and abnormal in the beta thalassemia but in the anemia of chronic diseases serum iron is normal or decreased serum ferritin may be normal or elevated TIBC may be normal or decreased, and hemoglobin electrophoresis is usually normal. Mostly, the normocytic pictures are seen in acute blood loss, chronic diseases, hemolysis, infection, inflammation, malignancy, renal insufficiency, and sickle cell disease. Macrocytics are again based on certain tests where we evaluate B12 <clears throat> and homocysteine levels and the serum fol folic acid levels. If it is elevated, uh, we, it is vitamin B12 level, uh, deficiency. If the MMA levels are normal, it is folic acid deficiency. The serum B12 levels and folic acid, when it is normal, the etiology is of other causes, mostly due to alcoholism, liver diseases, bone marrow uh, disorders, hypothyroidism, or any other medications like chemotherapy or antivirals. This is they usually present with symptoms of fatigue, headache, yellow skin, irregular heartbeats, chest pain, cold hands, dizziness, leg, leg cramps, and insomnia. But they also have other uh, uh, symptoms like when you see their hands and knuckles, the changes in the skin in the knuckles, the na nails changes. So we need to actually examine the patient and identify on a clinical scenario. On a global scenario, India has the highest prevalence of anemia in the world, which is close to around 40%. And uh, again, based because of the different, uh, uh, again, different causes, and maybe it is again uh, driver, uh, divided between absolute and functional iron deficiency anemia. Usually, absolute, uh, the absolute anemia is uh, defined when it is in, there is increased demand, decreased iron take, and decreased absorption or chronic blood loss, it is called absolute iron deficiency anemia, where the plasma iron is low and iron stores are also low. In cases where we see where there is inflammation or uh, erythropoietin uh, therapy, uh, that we usually see it in the functional iron deficiency anemia. Children aged below five years depend on their mother for the iron needs and hence are usually neg neglected. The anemia continues to rise among children and women in the reproductive age group. This is based on a survey in the year 2020. And uh, anemia cases in India is also on the rise. This is an NFHS uh, survey on in five. This is a recent National Family Health, Health Survey. And 67.5% of the Indian children aged between 6 to 59 months were found to be anemic. So iron deficiency anemia and pregnancy is also responsible to percolate this condition in the children. Why is there such a prevalence in India? It is mainly due to poor eating habits, inadequate, inadequate dietary intake or of iron and defective iron absorption, early onset of childbearing, higher parity and shorter intervals with the pregnancy, excessive physiological blood loss during menstruation in the adolescent and the reproductive women and pregnancy, hookworm infestation and lack of access to good health care. Now, Anemia Mukh Bharat was started and uh, the recent, uh, since 2018, it has been taken up very seriously and all of us have been participating in bringing about a change in these uh, women. But anemia across all age groups is very high still in India. 58% of the children between 6 months to 59 months and in adolescents, it's around 54%, both in boys and girls. In boys, it's around 29%. In women in their reproductive age is 53% and 50% of the pregnant women are found to be anemic and 58% of the breastfeeding mothers are found to be anemic. So it is very important that we intervene and correct. 
and there are many states which have achieved like madam has told there are states like maharashtra kerala which have achieved the targets but what is it that they have done differently they have set higher targets and interdepartmental convergence and regular programs to review in, at the highest level there is no supply stockouts or ruptures in the su supply chain management the bcc and iec counseling mass and mid media levels are very high monitoring and strengthening outreach services are covered very well there is a very high political commitment special strategies for malaria endemic zones screening tag tracking high risk anemia cases and treating them focusing on promoting iron rich diet and combination of in different interventions fortified diets iron folic acid proper supplementation deworming etc has been implemented to the next level the burden is also because of low iron stores during pregnancy in anemic mothers and poor iron stores from infancy childhood deficiencies and adolescent anemia inappropriate diet excessive consumption of iron inhibitors like tea coffee and calcium rich foods and low intake of iron enhancers like vitamin c low bioavailability of the dietary iron and 50% of the population is com consuming less than 50% iron loss due to parasitic load poor environmental sanitation unsafe drinking water and inadequate personal hygiene maternal anemia could be because of increased iron due to tissue blood formation and energy requirement during pregnancy iron loss from postpartum hemorrhage teen teenage pregnancies and repeated pregnancies with less intervals there is a huge public impact of this anemia which reduces the physical development impact on pregnancy outcomes reduced cognitive development and economic impact which which is why we should address anemia for both short term long term and integrational benefits improvements enhance human capital contribute to the virtuous cycle by fostering economic development and in due course enhances health and nutrition of women and children the world health assembly has proposed target of 50% reduction in anemia among women by 25 and nhp 2017 commits to reduce anemia prevalence by 3% per year the annual average rate of reduction of anemia prevalence currently is close to around 1% and the committed and we are committed to achieve a target of 3% so anemia mukt bharat is based on these three pillars and it is using a strategy which is 6 by 6 by 6 to combat anemia that is they have six beneficiary they use six interventions and six six international institutional mechanisms to implement this anemia mukt bharat the six beneficiaries include 124 million children in the age group of 6 to 59 134 million children between the age group of 5 to 9 years and 115 million adolescent boys and girls in the age group of 10 to 19 years 30 million pregnant women 27 million lactating mothers and 17 million women of the reproductive age group of 20 to 24 the estimated beneficiaries are around 250 million which is reaching almost nearly 50% of the country's population the six interventions include prophylactic iron and folic acid supplementation periodic deworming of the children adolescents and pregnant women intensified year round behavioral changes communication campaigns saying solid body smart mind and delayed cord camping cord clamping testing of anemia using digital methods and point of care treatment mandatory provisions of iron and folic acid fortified foods in the public health program in the midday meal scheme etc and additional non nutritional causes of anemia in endemic pockets with special focus on malaria hemoglobin hemoglobinopathies and fluorosis the six institutional mechanisms are the intra ministerial coordination national anemia Bar mukt bharat unit the national center of excellence and advanced research on anemia control which is at aims new delhi convergence of with other ministries strengthening supply chain and logistics anemia mukt bharat dashboard and digital portal a one stop shop for anemia so what is new and what is it different from the previous uh, pro uh, program that they have done is there is a coordinated management efforts intra and interministerial target ba target based monitoring and 
key performance indicators, reviews, and awards. They have included a lot of private schools and private uh, organizations. Instead of 60, 60 milligrams of, uh, uh, instead of 60 milligrams, they're giving 100 milligrams as the prophylactic dose, which are sugar-coated tablets. Communication materials for extensive awareness, intensive 360 degree communication campaigns, creating a Jan Andolan. Using digital methods of hemoglobin estimation and point of care treatment, newer treatment strategies using IV ion sucrose and FCM. The linkage with malaria, mandating use of fortified food in public health programs, especially doubled fortified salt with iron and iodine. And the linkage with academic, national and regional networks, relearning and reworking on the policy decision. So in pregnancy, again, now, now we are looking at anemia and pregnancy. So during pregnancy, anemia is in the first trimester, usually 11 is the normal cutoff. Mild is 10 to 10.9, moderate is 7 to 9.9, .9, and severe is lower than 7. In the second trimester, due to the physiological uh, anemia, the lower level is at 10.5, and third trimester is similar between 11 as the normal levels, 10 to 10.9 as the mild, 7, .9, 7 to 9.9 .9 as the moderate, and lower the 7 as severe anemia. The different uh, our bodies uh, define anemia at different levels, but all of it is are similar. This is the ICMR definition, and this is the CDC definition. In the CDC, they add hematocrit, which is less than 33 or 32 percent, is called as severe anemia. Why are we worried about the outcome of iron deficiency in pregnancy? Is because uh, it affects the maternal morbidity and mortality. It reduces the work capacity, intellectual capacity. It increases the maternal mortality, affects the immune function, and increases the risk of infections. It affects the fetus and the infant by uh, they have low birth weight deliveries, the risk of anemia after birth, and long-term deficit in physical and mental health of the fetus or the baby. The effect on the pregnancy outcome is preterm birth, low birth weight, and possibly placental abruption and increased peripartum blood loss. The Lancet Journal confirms via an international study, which included India, that pregnant women with anemia are twice as likely to die during or shortly after pregnancy compared to those without anemia. The proper and timely management of iron deficiency anemia, especially in pregnancy, is very, very important. There are a lot of risk factors, mainly uh, early age of marriage, uh, pregnant, teenage pregnancies, and a diet which is poor in iron-rich foods, poor in food that enhances iron absorption, and rich in food that diminishes iron absorption, dairy products, etc. GI diseases affecting absorption, short interval pregnancy, which is less than six months. We diagnosed based on history, examination, and investigation. So we've understood that there are uh, when we have done the clinical uh, evaluation of the patient. But then there are evaluation recommendations by different uh, bodies. And here we are allowed to do universal screening for iron deficiency anemia in pregnant women with universal supplementation. And uh, we have to, in the CDC recommends uh, CDC at least twice in pregnancy. And the initial evaluation should include RBC indices, serum iron levels, and ferritin levels. Empirical treatment with iron is reasonable. But we have to expect reticulocytosis, reticulocytosis within 7 to 10 days, subject to which the improvement is assessed and following which hemoglobin and hematocrit values could be reassessed later. The diagnosis here goes based on hemoglobin estimation, low, uh, the levels of ferritin, which should not be less than 30 micrograms per liter, low serum iron that less than 60 milligrams is evident of iron deficiency anemia, Elevated total iron binding capacity, low transferrin saturation, microcytic anemia with MCV less than 80, 80, and anemia seen on CBC. Raised erythrocyte zinc protoporphyrin, raised serum transferrin receptors, and blood indices are lower, and if required, bone marrow biopsy to differentiate for the differential diagnosis. In the management, the severity of based on the severity of anemia, gestational age of pregnancy, and tolerance of the therapy chosen, the first line of treatment would be medical nutrition therapy, deworming, oral iron therapy, parenteral iron therapy, and blood transfusion. Medical nutrition 
Therapy is the first line of choice. And when it is mild to moderate, it is very important to counsel our patients regarding the kind of diet they have to take and the uh, timing of iron supplementation that they have to take. So we have to ask them to take iron-rich foods, which include jaggery, spinach, pulses, eggs, liver, fish, cereal. And mostly if they are vegetarians, uh, they have a, a deficiency. And then cooking food in your iron utensils, intake of heme iron, adding iron absorption enhances like vitamin C compounds, ascorbic acid, avoiding phytates, coffee tea intake with iron supplement supplements, intake of iron supplements in between meals. WHO recommends routine deworming and in anemia of Bharat, tablet albendazole 400 mg stack to all antenatal patients after first trimester, preferably in the second trimester is given compulsorily. The other doses would be albendazole 400 mg stat or mebendazole 500 mg stat or 100 mg BD for three days. Oral iron therapy is the main role of uh, therapy in the mild to moderate cases and it is effective in the majority of the cases, but the absorption of iron is only one to 8% in the available oral iron preparations. But the absorption increases with increased dosing, that is 160 milligrams per day. Iron absorption is increased in iron deficient individuals also. So the different salts of iron are inorganic, organic, elemental, and chelated iron, and technological. In the inorganic group, we have ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarate, ferrous ferric ammonic citrate. And in the organic ferric polymaltos, elemental is carbonic iron, chelated is ferrous bisglycinate, and technological is ferrous ascorbate. Most commonly used iron supplements are the organic ones. The general instructions are to take the tablet either on an empty stomach or at least one hour after the meal in case of vomiting, nausea, and gastritis for better absorption, to avoid coffee, tea, and milk or calcium tablets along with these supplementation. Added taking vitamin C with iron is best as they are best absorbed in an acidic environment. And we have to start low doses to decrease the side effects. The factors affecting the oral iron absorption could be the dose, the status of the patient's iron stores, the form administered, stability in the gastric acids, elemental iron, and the bioavailability of the drug. And most important is the mind. What the mind understands, the hands do. So they need to be willing to take the supplements. So that's a very important uh, thing that we counsel them and make them understand how important it is to take the iron supplementation for the mother and for the child. So the ferrous fumarate, ferrous sulfate, and ferrous glycinate uh, they are best cost effective, commonly used, and it's more the ferrous glycinate is more effective and better tolerated than ferrous sulfate. The ferrous ascorbate is effective, better tolerated than ferrous sulfate. It has a higher bioavailability up to 40% and has rapid correction of hemoglobin. And carbonyl iron uh, is effective, inexpensive, tolerable, and the side effects are very less. In the ferrous bisglycinate comp Formed, amino acid chelates, they are higher bioavailability in the presence of dietary inhibitors also. The ferric ammonium citrate bioavailability of iron from ferric salts is three to four times less than that of the ferrous salt. In the ferric hydroxide polymaltose complex, it's a use, useful alternative formulation to those patients who cannot tolerate other iron preparations. The prophylaxis, the WHO recommends prophylaxis of 60 mg iron and 400 mg folic acid. But according to the Ministry of Health and Family Affairs, we are all giving 100 mg iron with 500 mg folic acid for 100 days, starting after the first trimester, 14 to 16 weeks, and also postpartum for another six months. The same doses continue. So they, it is important that they continue the dose postpartum to replenish the deficits. In pregnant, after achieving the normalization of the hemoglobin, the prophylactic daily iron supplementation is recommended for at least six months during pregnancy and should be continued in the postmortem for six months. The response is based on uh, the reassessment of the reticulocytosis and the hemoglobin levels. And in people who have not responded adequately, oral iron therapy 
they should be treated with alternative iron. Trans we have to transit to either IV iron supplementation or see how we can take it forward. The challenges here are mainly the GI side effects, uh, that is the nausea, flatulence, abdominal pain, constipation, uh, black stools, reflux, esophagitis, poor absorption due to interactions, and even sometimes some other drug in, uh, intake like uh, NSAIDs or salicylates. Uh, we need to see what are the medications they are on. And non-adherence is to 75%, treatment failures and unnecessary follow-up investigation and slow improvement in hemoglobin levels. Therefore, parental iron could be a better option in treating these patients who are not compliant. To summarize, oral iron supplementation is the first line treatment during pregnancy. GI side effects can lead to suboptimal patient adherence. Therefore, parental iron is seen to be an attractive option in the treatment of iron deficiency anemia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rekha, for a wonderful talk. I think you gave us a beautiful overview of what are the Government of India guidelines and also how we've come a long way since the original, you know, various fumarate preparations which we used to avoid like the plague because there's to cause so much GI upset. Over the past two, three decades, I think technology has taken us quite far where we have good bioavailability, good tolerability of oral oil preparations. I'll invite Dr. Meek, Madam, because she's still around. Madam, thank you for spending your precious time. Can you give us some insights into how the government looks at this Anima Bukt Bharat campaign and how far you think we have come as far as resolving this problem in the interiors of the country is concerned? I think we uh, we have progressed a lot. And especially I liked your uh, 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 this thing uh, presentation about the 6 into 6 into 6. That is a best strategy because you are you know targeting such a huge population and with this government uh, this rch program including which i already mentioned deworming then the direct uh, there there is also a very good method of giving iron tablet directly like tb in the tb medication when the patient used to throw it away now they are uh, seeing to it that they are giving it direct directly uh, dt you know, direct uh, introduction to the patient and also third very important thing is uh, uh, they are involving the i mean say a program that is a you know the children program then the other children related so children mother and all this program uh, you know uh, combined together is making a uh, very very big impact and i think what you said uh, uh, prati that i uh, this uh, because of lowering of the uh, this anemia uh, the rate of lowering is around 20 to 30 percent. Still, uh, we have a long way to go, but I think this is going to be a, a major, um, you know, achievement of this government. And also, the previous, and we, we are there since so many years as a deputy director, RCH. So, the continuous efforts has made a definite impact. And you can see the rate of maternal mortality, which is already lowered because of the improvement in the anemia. But still, we have far. You know, far way to go, and I think we will carry forward this program very well. I think after Kerala, Maharashtra is number two all India as far as maternal mortality is concerned. We've made huge strides over the past decade or so. Thank you very much, Dr. Meek, Madam, for being here today, and we wish you all the very best. Thank we you. hope to see you as Foxy President very soon. I'm sure Anima Mukta Bharat and many other government programs will be the focus of your year once you take over as and when you do take over. Thank you so much, ma'am, for gracing the occasion, for being here throughout this program and for all your blessings so far for our program. Thank you, Vasav. Bye-bye. Can you say something, Pratik? Yes, ma'am. You were saying something, right? No, no, I was just introducing Dr. Sudesh Doshi, sir. Sir, he is who is practicing here in a semi-rural setup in Pandarpur. He's a zonal coordinator of AMOGS, medical legal chairperson of AMOGS in the past, and somebody who is looked up to very much by all of us who are following in its footsteps. Thank you, sir, for joining us. You've raised your hand. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pratik. Pratik, Sudesh Mahalabhulu. And I had the, you know, privilege of working with him since last. I went to Pandarpur, I went to Kolapur, and again Satara. Wonderful speaker. And what he speaks, you know, directly appeals to the masses. 
whether it is a mtp or you know very practical subject and i i saw people engrossed in his lecture whenever he is talking and i think uh, that is the success of his you know uh, carrying forward the message of mox and also very practical tips so keep it up thank doctor you. so that you should thank you so much thank you so much dr mandakini for those kind words well uh, i had raised the word about anemia i also went through the lecture do i joined a little late but yes anemia is a important problem and we at all levels government levels private professional level we all are tackling with it but one thing which i uh, found it which is missing with our private practitioners is the government has recommended routine deworming at around 20 weeks one tablet of albendazole it works wonders we are giving iron salt uh, sucrose we are giving uh, sulfate salts ferric salts all things but one thing which is missing from our private practitioner lines is albendazole so i have been practicing this for last almost 15 years when i come to know about this program i would recommend strongly to all private practitioner to add a single tablet of albendazole in your prescription at around 20 weeks which will help patients for eradication or deworming and as dr mandakini said giving tablet directly to the patient i do practice that around 20 weeks when the patient comes with the anomaly scan i ask i give the patient tablet free of cost from my side it is only 2 or 3 rupees doesn't cost much and i ask the patient to chew it in front of me so that i know that she has taken the tablet and it helps to uh, form a good rapport with the patient patient thinks that doctor is caring for him and definitely it is a good gesture so i would recommend especially for private practitioners to include one tablet of albendazole at 20 weeks which will help a long way in any man thank you very important practice point from dr doshi thank you very much sir for that important remark we have